In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a global accessible list of items. And so we're working on a Recycler View app, but if you just came to see the global list, then stay tuned. So in this application, we have two different uh, views. We have two different screens. We have the main screen, which shows all the presidents, and then we're going to have a data entry screen. And so the issue that arises is, we're going to be sharing a list of data between those two screens. So the presidents obviously want to show every president on the list, and then the data update and add screen is going to also add an item to that list. So the question comes up, where do you store that? In the previous edition of this tutorial, we just had the first screen, the one with the president list on it, that had the list in it. And uh, we're gonna find out that there's several ways that you could share that data. One way is to create this global variable way. So that's, that's the process that we're gonna show here. An alternative, if you want to get into it, is to share that list with a database. So you would have database access rights for each of the activities, and each of them could save and read from that list of data. So either one of these solutions will work, and we're going to do the first one, which is the global access list. But if you would like to see how to use uh, SQLite, which is the Android database, you could see the tutorial that I'm going to suggest here up at the top or down in the uh, comments below. So if you'd like to use the database, then go ahead and check out those links. Otherwise, we're gonna continue on to create this global variable in, the, in an application. So let's look at our code and see where we currently are. So in the activity we've got right now, the main activity, we have the recycler view. And I think it was some down here that we created a function or a method called fill president list. And so this is where we initialize the list. Where did we save the list? The list was saved here as a class member variable. So near the top of the class. Now what I'd like to do is to make that accessible to other activities. So could you make this thing public and then share it that way? Here's, here's a way that might be recommended for you. So we're going to create a new class and we're going to extend the application class. So I'm going to the Java folder and choose new Java class and I'm gonna call this thing my application. And it's just gonna be a generic class to start with. Now we're going to do extends and then the application is the, is the next thing. So this gives us some special abilities. It allows us to create a globally accessible class, which is kind of what we're after. Now, this is not going to be recognized unless we manifest, put something in the manifest. So let's go into the manifest area. So now here in the manifest, we are going to add a new property inside of the application brackets. So I'm gonna type in the word name. So I'm looking for Android colon name. And then it gives us a suggestion. It says, perhaps you wanted to call it my application. Well, it wasn't that handy. That's exactly what I wanted to call it. So I'm gonna save that. So if you forget this step, you'll get all kinds of strange errors. So make sure that you go into the manifest and say that your application is now got a name. All right, so that's like an ID number, really. So let's go back into our uh, code here that was uh, my application. And now we're gonna add some new variables. So the variable that I'm interested in sharing globally is the list of presidents. So I'm gonna create this as a private and type list, and then we'll call it presidents list, and it's the new array list. So I could have copied this directly out of main activity, it's the exact same line. Now I'm going to change one more thing on this, is I'm going to add the word static here. Now the reason why I'm gonna put static is because I don't want this to change uh, from one uh, instance to another, so uh, static keeps the list uh, well, static. Now, we're gonna borrow some code here from main activity. So let's come back to here and let's go down to the initialization. So I'm gonna just cut this out now. I'm gonna cut it, control X, and then come back to our my application. And uh, let's create a new, new, new method there. So we're gonna be using that in a second. What we need next is a constructor. So I'm going to put a constructor in by choosing generate. So right click and generate and a constructor, and there's my application. So what do I wanna do when my application starts? Well, I wanna do fill the president's list, and that's pretty much all I need to do. So I could just copy all these lines and put them into there, that would work as well, but I've got a extra helper function. Now I'm going to be adding and perhaps removing these presidents from the list. 
So I've got a list of ID numbers that goes from 0 to 9. How am I going to figure out what the next one is? Well, I should probably keep track of what the highest ID number is. So I'm going to create another property. So the property I'm going to make is an integer, and I'll make it static as well. And we'll call this thing next int. And since we know that we're going to have item 10 as our next guy, let's set it to 10 right now. So I'm going to be using that property whenever I add a new element to the list. So the next ID number will be 11, 12, 13, and it will never go lower. So we can skip ID numbers. They don't have to be sequential. Now the last item that needs to be done are the getters and setters. So I'm just going to do the generate command again, and I will generate all of the getters and setters that I need here by selecting both and clicking OK. So we've got ourselves a globally accessible list. Well, supposedly. Now, how do I ex get that? So I'm going to come back into main activity now. And we've got ourselves uh, this issue of fill the president's list. Let's get rid of that. And I'm also going to define the president's list differently. So to make this work, I'm going to have to make another reference to my application. So I'm going to say, I'll get a copy of this. I'm going to say my application is going to be the variable name. And where's it going to come from? Well, I need something called get application. And uh, let's see if that'll work. So it says you uh, have a problem. Uh, we need to put in a cast statement. So uh, let's, let's see what happens when I choose cast. There it is. So now it says get application is going to be of type my application. OK, so now I have a reference to my application. OK, so now I have this president's list defined. And uh, I'm not going to assign the value yet. I'm going to just put in a semicolon. But down here in the uh, method called onCreate, that's where I'm going to create it. So we, before I had fill president's list, I think, right here. This is going to do the same thing, though. It's going to say president's list is going to be equal some new values. So I'm going to say my application dot, and I'm going to type in get. I'm hoping to get president's lists. President's, there it comes. It's slow this time. But get president list is one of the methods. So this should fill the presidents with the value from the global application. Very nice. Um, let's test it out, of course. I'm going to run it and see if anything broke. All right, the application is up and running. And it looks to me like it's filling in the presidents correctly. So even though the uh, data source is from a different class, we still get the same results at the end. Now the next step is going to be able to access this list from another uh, activity. So we have a second activity in our problem here. It's called add or edit one. And let's show the layout so that way you know which one we're talking about here. So the layout is for adding or editing one more item to my list. So let's choose the activity add edit one and open that up. And let's see what that is supposed to do. You can see from the uh, layout that it is, it's looking to create a new president. And so this can also access the same data. So let's go in and code that. I'm going to add edit one. And uh, we're going to get a list of the presidents here. So, so just like I did in main activity, I can create a, a variable here that can hold all the presidents. So I'm going to make a list of type president and call it president list. So this is a local variable to this class, but we can get the values from the main class. We need to get an, uh, something from my application. So let's get a my application. And we're going to make this as uh, this get application. And once again, it's going to force us to create a cast. So we have my application coming from here. Then in the uncreate activity, we can say the president list is going to be equal to my application dot get presidents. Uh oh, is it going to work? There it comes. Good. All right. I don't know why it doesn't show up immediately, but we've got ourselves the president's list. So now what do we do when we get to the uh, part down here where it says click OK? Well, I'm going to put in some comments so we know what we're after here. So here's the plan of what we're going to do. I'm going to create a president object based on the things that the user just filled in for us. And then we're going to uh, add it to the global list. And then finally, go back to the main activity with the navigation. So that's already done with the intents that you see on the screen. So there's some things that we need to do to make these accessible. So I have three different fields where they're getting data 
from the user. So these are called ET picture URL and uh, ET person name and something like that. So we've got three different, we've got name, date, and uh, image. We've got to put those into our activity. So let's define those at the top of the screen here. So I'm going to define three different names that uh, match up pretty closely to those edit texts. So we're going to have the date, the president's name, and then also his image URL. So those are all edit texts. They're going to be strings. So down in the uncreate section, we need to define these values. We're going to get them from the layout. So each of those is going to use find view by ID. And so we're going to have date of election, president's name, and the picture URL. So those should all be defined now. So one of the items that we're going to have to create for a president is his ID number. And remember in the global class, I created this uh, field called next ID. So let's get that first. So now we're ready to create the new president. So that's, that's literally what I'm going to call him, his new president. And we're going to use a constructor to create him. So the constructor has several things. First of all, it has an ID number. So I know that that's going to be next ID. Next is going to be his uh, name. So let's go to our edit text, uh, president's name, and we're going to get the text from that. Okay, the next thing is going to be his date. So the three items that I'm trying to gather are his uh, name, his uh, election date, and then the image URL. And so all of these are supplied by the user in this form. Now when I'm finished here, I still have a red line. So uh, the uh, compiler is angry at me because something's not right. It says, uh, if I hover here, it says, I was expecting a string and an integer and a string. And you gave me three things called editable. What in the world are you doing, you idiot? Don't you know that those are not strings? Well, I can fix these by adding the dot to string method at the end. Okay, is that better now? Good grief, you're so picky. Let's see if that helps. I'm going to put to string, to string, and then to string. Now, there's going to be a problem with one of these, and let's see if you can figure out which one it is. Okay, are we done now? Let's go and check it out again. It says, uh, you still got one wrong. The middle one is not a string. You provided me a string and I wanted an integer. Okay, so yes, the date is supposed to be an integer. Okay, so how are we going to fix this one here? So I'm going to type in the word integer and then I'm going to say uh, get an integer from a string. So that's what I'm looking for. So let's do get integer and parentheses around it and finally the errors go away. Phew. Okay, now there's a real big problem here is that we're just assuming that the user fills in the details of the form correctly. Uh, if they leave something blank, uh, we're going to crash probably because we're going to have null values. But um, let's, let's worry about testing uh, and, and validation in a minute. Let's see if we can test this to see if it actually runs first. Okay, so the first thing is create a new president. Now we need to add him to the list. So we have this president's list and I'm going to do add and then we're going to add the new guy, the new president. And then finally, we go back to the main activity. Okay, so we're going to add a new guy to the list. However, uh, I made a mistake. I should update this item here. So we have the next ID. If we add a new president, we need to increment the next ID. So let's say uh, my application dot uh, set uh, next ID. And we want to do what currently is the next ID and add one to it. So let's see if that will bump that up by one. All right, let's see if we can run this and find out if we can add a president to our list. Okay, it looks like we got an app going. Let's go ahead and add one. And uh, I'm going to get a picture and then put this person in. So I'm going to swipe over here to the Wikipedia article where I was getting these photos before. And let's uh, scroll down and let's get a new president here. So, hey, there's Barack. Let's try him. I'm going to right click and choose uh, copy image address and let's see he was elected in 2008 so let's uh, swipe back to our app and I'm gonna put in here Barack Barack and then his date was 2008 and now to paste here I'm going to click again do I have to do a long click how do I do this double click there it is a long click apparently is what I need okay and then the paste item comes up and there is the picture of Barack Obama. Hopefully that one works. Let's click OK. And the app crashed. OK, 
So I didn't do it right, obviously. Let's go and check out the log to find out why. It says here, uh, we have a problem on line 41. It says int value on a null object reference. Okay, so obviously we didn't get anything from the value at that uh, property. So it was empty. Hmm. So I wonder if get integer was the right thing. I'm going to try parse integer. Let's try that. Parse int and we'll do that. Okay, so here we go. We got the app up and running again. I'm going to add one. Let's type in the same guy, Barack, and I'm going to put in 2008 and do a long click on this thing to get paste. And I think they've got them all filled out. Let's click OK. And uh, it does look like it came back to the main screen. Here's the test. Let's scroll down. What are we going to get at the bottom? So Ronald Reagan. Is there anyone beyond Ro Ronald Reagan? There is not. So why didn't that show? Oh, there he is. OK, I'm sorry. So Barack did show up. He just took a little longer than I expected. And uh, we've got a new president. So this appears to be working. Now, in the next video, we're going to create an edit option. So when I click on Abraham Lincoln, it's going to let me go ahead and change him. So hang around and we'll show you how to create an edit form.